The WGA have ended their strikes after crushing Hollywood, getting largely the same payments they were offered well over a month ago. Yes, when they offered those payment terms a month ago, this was just an attempt to make us cave, not to bargain with us. In fact, the original headline of that article was WGA React Studios' latest offer as divisive and full of loopholes. But now we've got re-offered those new numbers. It's exceptional. It's amazing how much your opinion can change after another month of rent. Are you taking the Piss. The issue is though, now they've got to return to work and they're finding uh, there may not be the work available. The head of HBO has recently come out and said there is no business as usual after the strike. Yeah, sure, he's happy it's over. But we are in a moment in the industry where there's a lot changing. We're kind of coming out of a bubble, I would say. And we're dealing with the fallout from that. And the strike was just another way to deal with that format. You'd made all of these deals, you were paying people $20 million a year just in case they wrote something that you wanted. They didn't write you anything, they still got paid. That doesn't make any sense. Phoebe Waller-Bridge had a three-year deal with Amazon at $20 million a year, and it bore no fruit. They still renewed it, though, back in January. It should be noted this was before the Amazon CEO himself started to investigate Amazon Prime Video and start demanding that they explain their big spending. And then soon after that, magically, two shows got cancelled that had been previously renewed. The Peripheral being one of them, where the first series cost them $175 million for eight episodes. Episodes. And even sources within the company said, yeah, it probably should have been cancelled. But they didn't want to lose the political capital with Jonah Nolan. People like Jennifer Salky have just been pissing money up the wall because it's not their money to lose in the first place. It seems your stupidity is second only to your inability to control your temper. But when the money runs out, the adults come back in the room and suddenly it matters again. The issue the WGA had is they decided to strike just as the industry was realising we don't have any money. They were already looking at their books. And then along comes your writers who just start demanding completely unreasonable terms. Like absurd minimum writers rooms of compulsory hiring people who don't need to be there just because the industry has too many writers and too few jobs. That's what HBO head means by uh, the industry is changing, there's a lot changing right now. We've got to sort out our books somehow. It's an uncertain time. It's a scary time. It's a bug planet. It's an ugly planet. A bug planet. A planet hostile to My favourite part is where he says, I want everybody to feel that they've got a good deal. Not, I want everybody to get a good deal. He just wants you to feel like you have. This carpet is a person with feelings. But if you've got too many writers, and they do, we're now doubling down on issues. When TV businesses faced further contraction as the market reopens, the bubble has burst. Now they don't go into numbers here, but I've heard several people mention this at this point. One is from Nerdrotic, but this particular clip is from Chris Gore on Film Threat. What this will do is strain budgets for television, mm -hmm. and you're going to see 600 TV shows over the next few years become only 300 shows. The sort of like gold rush or it's content. Over. And that is worse than it sounds. Because the problem is, we already have too many writers, even with current output. There were numerous people on the strikes going, there just isn't enough work for us. We're barely scraping a living. We can't even get health care. Uh, seven or eight thousand uh, an episode. Maybe that sounds great. Say I cobble together two or three guest stars a year. Where I think health care requires you to make 24 grand a year. That wasn't because they were paid low, that was because they just couldn't get the work. Now the WGA themselves would have great numbers on the amount of people who are writers and the amount of shows being produced. Therefore, if they wanted to preserve as many jobs as possible, coming up with a minimum number of writers room required would be pretty easy to do. 12 writers per writers room as a minimum. Six writers on a six episode series, if you get up to 18 episodes you go up to 12 writers. That's the maximum that the WGA thought that they could preserve. The issue is, when they come back and agreed a deal, they basically got half of all the minimums they wanted. That means immediately, half of all writers basically don't have a job anymore. Because they're not going to set minimums that they couldn't fill with their current user base. So if they suddenly agree to half, well, half of your entire guild just lost their jobs. And you would be forced to make those calculations of recent activity, where we were pumping out shows at record speed. And now, you've got Chris Gore's comment. You're going to see half the number of TV shows 
that currently exist. And that is just the reality because the money isn't there. So not only did they agree to half the writers' rooms, we're now doing half the shows, leaving you with a quarter of the writers you had before. You want to talk about contraction within the marketplace? You've certainly got some there. I'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work. With that in mind, the writers' comments at the end of the strike look uh, starkly different. They've been sharing their joy on social media. Let's go back to work. But if they're working in television, it's not clear what kind of business they'll be returning to. It likely isn't what they left five months ago. You have accelerated contraction, increased competition, reeled in budgets, fewer overall projects, and possibly even more cancellations on the way. One thing they are not anticipating, a flood of spec scripts. And why would that be? Well, this is Hollywood. We want to get paid 20 grand a month. We just don't want to have to do any work for it. I wish I was joking. Back in the previous strike, there was lots of talk of, I'm waiting for the strike to be over. I need to be prepared. But not this time. Everyone had good intentions to take the time and write. But not a lot of people did. People were busy. They were standing on the picket lines. They were there every day. They were invested in the strike. That's where they, all their emotions were. As a result, there won't be many spec strips because basically, we stood on a street corner for a few months and didn't do any pissing work. The Hollywood work ethic, everybody. What do they deserve? Starvation wages. What do they get? 11 grand a week, nine and a half grand a week, eight and a half grand a week. If they get 20 weeks work, or for a development room up to 19 weeks, seven grand a week, 13 grand a week, or 14.2 grand a week. By the way, this writer producer title, that's the one who got their week to week pay rate increased by 43.8% in this agreement, from 10 grand to 14.2. And they're also the ones that got hard baked into the agreement of three writer-producers, no matter how many people you hire. Hey, if you do up to six episodes and you only need three writers, well, they're all writer-producers at 14 grand a week. We are union through and through, all the way to the end. Well, we've reached the end now, and it seems that the union was actually for the few and not the many after all. Yeah, we're only keeping 25% of the writers, and the writers that remain, well, they get 14 grand a week, but the rest of you, good luck in whatever your future career holds. Union power! Union power! How does it- Now that might be why this deal pissed off some people. Although, I can't say I'm angry about it, as the people it did piss off was the World Socialist website, who called it a sellout contract. And hey, it might be, but the people that they were selling out were the people with no talent in the first place. If you're only keeping 25% of writers, you would hope that someone somewhere has the intelligence to at least keep the good ones. Now this is Hollywood, so that's still not exactly a guaranteed thing. Often said that Marvel movies all end the same way, following some unwritten rule that you have to throw a bunch of plot. But it does provide the opportunity to not have all of those sensitivity readers there looking over your shoulder. The writers should reject the agreement and fight to mobilize the entire working class against the ruling class offensive against jobs and living standards. Yes, if you refuse to just randomly employ people that you have no use for, then I'm not gonna work for you and I'm gonna stand on a street outside not working for you. Really don't think you've thought this through. The anti-democrat- they're literally voting on it, you idiot. You even said they should reject the agreement, implying that they have a choice whether they want to accept it. I don't know what I expected to find here, but I was even more disappointed with what I ended up with. But the writers got basically the same pay they've been offered previously. They couldn't be bothered to work in the five months they had off. And there's gonna be a tiny fraction of jobs that there were before. And on top of that, even if you did put some of the work in because you're not a lazy bomb, well, no one is buying. This is the worst marketplace I have ever experienced. Across the board, buyers will be buying less and making less. A potential strike forces everyone to go on pause at the same time, but they all need to reframe and pivot as they have so much that's not working. And that is one of the reasons the strike was such a bad idea. At a time when all of their bank balances were collapsing, but they were still in the mind of, we're on a treadmill, we've got to keep getting stuff out to renew for subscribers. You decided to give them a break. You gave them the opportunity to not have to focus on content, but instead they could look inwards at the company. What was working, what wasn't, and what was a really stupid idea, like all of those contracts. You gave them the time to clean house and come up with a plan for the future. Didn't involve you. They cancelled your agreements they refocused on hopefully better programming that cost a lot less money. All the while, you decided to ask for more. That's how you end up with cancellations and unrenewals. And that's how you end up with people who should have been writing spec scripts during this time. Well, they just decided to return to Warhammer 40k and build a new army. My favourite out of all of them was this one, where she said, I went to a cabin by myself 
wrote ideas on post-it notes, posted them on a wall, and thought, can I make a movie out of that? Which, as far as we could see in the finale, is how the She-Hulk writer's room worked. And then you had people who decided to make up their own writer's room to stave off the depression and misery, which turned into half therapy and half effing around. But the problem is, it was much slower, and yet, after 400 pages of notes, they still don't know what they wrote down that was just busy work to keep them sane, rather than being actually usable. You're from California writing comedy, just assume it's all trash. This is the show of legal paperwork. Huh, okay, cool. You even had this from David Steinberg, executive producer and showrunner, who gave a very blunt and honest description about his post-strike anxiety. He does a long post about how social the strike was and how it was really friendly. But then we hit the uncomfortable truth when he says writers at every level have long stretches of unemployment, and it sure does feel better to be on strike strike than unemployed. When it was over, every writer's first thought was, oh crap, now I need a job. And he himself hasn't written in five months and just assumes it'll come back to him. Yeah, the moment I get back in that room, I'll just instantly be able to write a masterpiece. It's not like every single talent and ability degrades if you don't do it over time. But hey, just take a leaf out of this guy's book. The words that when you look at them on Tuesday are not as bad as you remember them being on Monday afternoon. Write something crap on Monday, come back to it Tuesday and think, yeah, that'll do. The most interesting part that he had though, is when he said it's a lot easier to be on strike than unemployed, because there'd been some absolutely bizarre takes from people coming out. Because at first, it sounds quite bad that some of the WGA members who picketed can't even vote on the deal due to an earnings requirement. And you're like, that's horrific. People were standing out there for five months and now you won't allow them to vote on it? What, because five months of unemployment would lower anyone's income? So of course they don't meet the minimum requirements. It sounds very logical until you get down into the details of it. Yes, Adip here posted that marginalized writers enthusiastically sacrificed our time, energy, money, health and safety for 148 days. Safety. That's gaslighting. That's what it is. Now it's a dog eat dog world and there were some underhand tricks going on, such as Universal Studios engaging in malicious tree trimming. But come on, mate, don't you think safety's pushing it a bit far? Oh, you've taken the leaves off the trees. That's unsafe. And we wonder why they can't write a decent show. No, the WGA PR machine benefited from our diverse <laughs> ability. How would you expect me to take you seriously? I improved the WGA just by existing. Yes, please, all just admire the light bouncing off my face. I've improved your visibility. This, this, we're the victims. Feel bad for us. That's what that is. But many of us don't have writing jobs to return to due to systemic issues within. So this guy didn't meet the minimum earning requirements required, and so now he can't vote on the agreement that he's apparently been striking for. And then you just scroll down the agreement, which he has ever so kindly highlighted, like he thinks it improves his argument. You quickly find out the earnings requirement is around $38,000 excluding residuals over the past six years. I'm sorry, but if you haven't earned 38 grand writing in six years. I think it's safe to say you've not invested enough to require a vote. I also don't know why you were striking in the first place. I mean, if we're going to take it down to those levels, I should have just walked off down to Hollywood and picked up a sign. I'd have at least written something better on it than most of them. And I can't help thinking that that is the perfect definition of people who would rather think of themselves on strike than unemployed. I also like the first comment. This newsletter made me feel seen. <laughs> so seen. I felt invisible earlier today, but it turned out I just hadn't turned my camera on properly. Now, don't get me wrong, I do think the WGA have gotten a good deal. It's just that I thought they got a good deal over a month ago, the first time we saw it. Like, as you can see, even from their percent increases per year, you had what the WGA wanted, what the armpit offered, that was basically just in the middle. Pretty standard negotiating there. And also, this offer was the highest wage increase for writers in 35 years. I don't know what else to call that except a good deal. Deal. Unless you want to argue that your previous 35 years were all awful, in which case your union negotiated that for you, they must be trash as well. Union! Power. So combine that with the 43.8% wage increase that they got for the three writer producers, which are now guaranteed on every production, and I think that's a great deal. Just 
for a few people. But that's the outcome of any strike. It gets higher wages and then fires more people. The writers should have known that going into it. We are union! I take, I take, I take responsibility. Responsibility. Maybe that sounds great. But it raises another point. If you're now left with 25% of the writers that you had previously, it also means arguments like this don't work. And remember, it didn't work before because he hasn't even hit the minimum required to vote on the agreement in the first place. But talking about marginalized writers, or you benefited from our diverse visibility. If you're a massive discriminatory bigot, which is what would be required to care about this in the first place, it's not really good for business or writing. And so if they want to keep the best 25% of their writers, there isn't really room to employ people just so you can change some statistics. Or at least they shouldn't be, but this is Hollywood. And so if you ask to ask me, will they just keep the the best writers or will they go down with the sinking ship by doubling down on all of their checkboxes? I've got to be honest, I'm still leaning to they'll sink the ship. <laughs> really wish that we could get it to you guys, but we need to stand on the right side of history. But all of this does mean that when the studios presented their best and final offer, I think it was essentially treating the writers like adults after they've just spent the last months behaving like children. You essentially go to them and go, this is the best we can do. Like, yes, you're demanding the world. You're asking for all these extra jobs. There just isn't any money. We're cutting our shows. We're canceling our agreements and you get this or nothing. And all the people in those rooms thought, well, you know, if we're only going to keep a small percent of our writers, but they get a lot more money, I'm probably going to be one of those writers. And suddenly the agreement doesn't sound so bad after all. If there's one thing you can always guarantee, it's that when it comes to Hollywood, everything's always self-interest. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel, for some people at least. Netflix Germany actually says that they are not slowing down with investments. They're just being a little bit more deliberate. But she describes that some territories are more saturated than others. That it's still a growth market for them, and so they're not slowing down their investment. Whereas the US, she thinks the US has hit the cap. The question is, where is the extension for them? They will have to go abroad, and that's where the growth is. Now, I do think that that's wrong, because like most people in the industry, the one thing they never actually, it never even enters their head, that the content might just be trash. You have the boy's magic. No, this magic belongs to no boy. No, they always assume that the content is great. You must want the content, they just, just don't for some reason, therefore we'll never win you over. And I actually think that that is one of the reasons why Germany could be having a growth market and other places don't. Yeah, you've got more people accessing broadband, so you're hitting more people. But then you have stuff like Korean TV shows, and if I want guaranteed entertainment, I'd go and watch something from Korea, it's just better. That's not because more people have broadband, it's the quality of the content, and other countries can do what the US can't. Because the reason why the streamers are having problems, it's not because, oh, we just don't have enough customers available. America's a massive place. It's that what they are producing simply doesn't please enough people. Because Hollywood's values, Hollywood's morality, doesn't represent or resonate with enough people within the country. And you can't tell good stories if your morals are opposite that of your audience. Because that's how you end up with Secret Invasion, where you keep telling your audience that the evil guy is actually good. So the WGA strike, they wanted more money and instead just talk themselves out of a job. There simply aren't the opportunities available for them, and we're not even over yet, because the actors decided that they were gonna strike as well. They were energized and emboldened by a deal. Which isn't really good language, is it? It just sounds like you're going to ask for more. Well, they got all of this stuff, we want a load of stuff as well. But the issue is, if left shows are being made, uh, there's gonna be less for the actors. And they were complaining before that they're not getting enough work to even get health insurance. Say I cobble together two or three guest stars a year. So when you get their questions like, will the Writers Guild deal expedite SAG-AFTRA's negotiations? You're like, well, does it even matter at this point? Because if we're halving the productions, but also lowering the budgets, we're going to need a lot less than half the actors. And do you really expect anyone to be sorry for you after how you've behaved over the months? I mean, you may have got Bill Maher to offer mild praise to the WGA, thanking them for allowing him to actually work. But after he came out and tried to bring it back, they attempted to destroy him, prevented him from owning his own labor because he couldn't even choose when he went to work and bankrupt his staff because they weren't allowed to work either, even though they had nothing to do with the strikes. And yet, he thanked them. Do you think he did that because he's genuinely thankful for them or because it was what he was perceived to have to do? The proverbial barrel against his head of perception. These people are writing my show. I should probably at least say I'm pleased that they're back, despite the fact that they stood outside my office's at me the other day, and there was one special group of people. The scribes celebrating their new deal, 
while showing solidarity with sag -Aftra. Oh, we can go back to work. I can write again, but I'm, I'm just going to stand on the sidewalk. Yeah, actually, I, I could work. I could work. I, I'm just choosing not to because I really like these people over here. It sure does feel better to be on strike than unemployed. I feel so seen. No, this strike ended the same way as all the others, harming the workers. We are the Borg. Your culture will adapt to service us. What they should have done is negotiated individually on a product, depending on the budget of that product and their past experience, like every other person does in a free market. That would have been fine. Their wages wouldn't have had to wait three years for an increase and you just negotiate on every new product that you get. That would be better for the industry, lead to more projects overall and everyone would be happy, but instead we're doing this. We handed over our power to a random negotiating team because quite frankly we can't be bothered to do that. And in doing so, even handed over control of our own labour. The WGA writers don't even own themselves. And so they made a decision that they wanted more money. The studios were actually just hiding a pile of gold behind all of their products that got seen by 10 people and they wanted their fair share. Well, they wanted a fair share of the industry and it looks like they've got it. The industry is shrinking because they've killed it and now they're getting a quarter of the jobs that they had before they striked. Congratulations, folks. Your actions may always be motivated by self-interest, but that doesn't mean you actually know how to get it. Because if you did, the WGA wouldn't exist in the first place. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.